partial derailment. But what had caused the wheel to derail at such high speed? As investigators continued to examine the track, the next piece of the puzzle fell into place. Five kilometers back from the accident site, they discovered shards of rubber, which they determined had come from dampeners on one of the train's wheels. To learn more, investigators turned their attention to the construction history of the ICE train. Seven years earlier, test runs had identified a problem with the train's monoblock wheels. Made from a solid single cast of steel, monoblock wheels were standard on high-speed trains at the time, but they caused serious vibration in the ICE's carriages. Fearing a huge loss of revenue from passengers unwilling to ride on such noisy and uncomfortable trains, the ICE's operators, Deutsche Bahn, urgently looked for a solution. They found what they thought was the answer on a tram. Trams had been using rubber cushioned resilient wheels for years to reduce noise and vibration. Unlike the monoblock wheel, the resilient wheel consists of three parts. A central steel core, rubber pads to dampen vibration, and a steel rim mounted on the rubber. In their choice of the resilient wheel, engineers had solved the immediate problem of ICE's passenger comfort, but they'd unwittingly created a new problem. Resilient wheels were safe on relatively low-speed trams, but they had a much greater chance of severe metal fatigue at high speed than solid monoblock wheels. With every high-speed rotation of a steel rim mounted on rubber, the metal gradually weakens. If the rim was on a solid hub, like this pencil lying on the desk, and we apply a load to the outside of the rim, then the rim can't deflect and is supported by the solid hub. If, however, it's supported on rubber pads, now we deflect the rim and tensile stresses develop on the underside of the rim of the wheel. Eventually, the stresses were sufficient to cause a fatigue crack. So, the crack grows by a tiny amount with each repetition of the load until eventually it is so big that the, the pencil breaks. During its lifetime, the resilient wheel on ICE 884 had travelled over 1.8 million kilometres. But tragically for the passengers on June the 3rd, 1998, this was its last journey. A severe stress fracture in the steel rim caused it to rupture and detach from its steel core. The rubber pads disintegrated and the broken rim jammed up into the carriage. That was the part of metal that had gone through the floor of the carriage, uh, alerting the passenger to the danger. The train was able to continue in this unstable condition for another five kilometers, but when it approached a set of track points with a guide rail, disaster was certain. The other end of the broken wheel rim caught on the guide rail, ripping it up and out of place, derailing all the carriages behind. The train was then being pulled by two different forces. It was trying to go straight on, but the wheels were pulling it sideways. The first three cars decoupled and continued under the bridge. But the remaining carriages now had nowhere else to go but straight into it. The collision was so extreme that the bridge completely collapsed on top of the train. So a combination of a broken wheel rim and the proximity of the guide rail to a 300-ton concrete bridge resulted in the largest death toll in high-speed rail history. After the crash, many changes were made by the German Federal Department of Railways. The Escherer disaster showed that if a train is partially derailed, it's most likely to suffer complete derailment when it reaches a set of track points. So it was decided that all track points should be moved away from bridges and other potentially hazardous structures. Additionally, with its high-speed design flaw now starkly exposed, the resilient wheel had had its day. After the accident, these resilient wheels were withdrawn from service, and I think it's highly unlikely that they will ever be used again for high-speed train applications. The resilient wheel was replaced by the more trustworthy solid monoblock wheel. But although the broken wheel was the root cause of the accident, there was a major additional factor that made the outcome far worse than it might have been. 
The twisted wreckage of ICE 884 was chilling proof that the train's structural integrity had been seriously inadequate. One of the things that made it worse was the way that the carriages jackknife piling into each other and crushing the people inside. The ICE carriages were made of a lightweight aluminium body shell welded to a heavy steel underframe. As the carriages concertinaed into themselves on impact with the bridge, many split along the weld lines as if by a tin opener, crushing passengers inside or spitting them out onto the track. It was clear that the train just hadn't been designed to withstand a high-speed collision. Like the ICE train, the AGV has welded aluminium body shells for their weight advantage. But the difference is, before they were even built, the AGV carriages were tested to their limits using advanced computer modelling. Et donc nous avons besoin d'une caisse très rigide. Et pour cela, euh, on emploie les outils normaux de l'ingénieur, à savoir du calcul de structure, de la modélisation par, euh, comme on appelle, par élément fini, de manière à pouvoir modéliser l'ensemble de la structure et ensuite l'ensemble de la réponse de la structure. The AGV's engineers would rather not wait until a crash to know how their carriages will respond. So calculations are made based on the property limits of the materials used and the potential forces exerted in a collision. With this information, engineers strive to perfect their design for maximum safety. But the key to the AGV's crash worthiness isn't just in the individual strength of its carriages, but in the rigidity of the train as a whole. This is achieved by addressing the very same problem that Deutsche Bahn were trying to solve with the resilient wheel on the ICE, vibration. We faisons des calculs prenant compte les deux situations, le vibratoire et la sécurité en cas de crash de manière à avoir la structure qui répond aux deux considérations. On all trains, the wheels are housed in a chassis known as a bogey. On conventional trains, including the German ICE fleet, these bogies are located at the front and back of each carriage, directly below the passengers. Reducing vibration here depends heavily on good suspension. But the AGV has what are known as articulated bogies, which are located under the vestibules between carriages. Moving the bogies away from the passengers eliminates the majority of vibration and rolling noise on board. But the bonus of the articulated bogey is that not only does it solve the issue of passenger comfort, its very positioning contributes to the rigidity of the train as a whole in the event of a derailment. Et vous avez les deux voitures, une là, une là, qui sont très solidement connectées par une articulation et c'est ce qui fait la clé à la fois des qualités aérodynamiques et de confort mais aussi de sécurité du train. C'est pratiquement indissociable. When carriages are mounted on conventional bogies, like ICE 884, in the event of a derailment, there's potential for significant pivotal movement between them. If one car derails in a certain direction, the momentum can cause the next one to jackknife the opposite way, as was the case in Eshida. But the positioning of the articulated bogies on the AGV means the carriages are strongly supported at the point of pivotal movement, making for a far more rigid trend. So if one car derails and moves in a certain direction, 